Hello my friends, Mrs. Orendorf here. Today we are going to draw a little zebra friend um, on a sunset. I have not glued down my zebra yet because I want to give you two choices depending on what kind of art supplies you have at home. This here is a simple sunset with three watercolors um, paints. We have red, orange and yellow, and then the pattern repeats, red, orange, and yellow. Okay, so that's one. And then the other one, which is a little more challenging, so my older friends may wanna try this one, um, but it's all a matter of personal preference and what you have at home. So here it's called a watercolor crayon resist. I started a pattern of a zigzag line with red, orange and yellow. Do you see the same pattern here? Sunset, red, orange, yellow. And then I went over them with liquid watercolor. Um, actually, it's this one. I have been using it a lot because it's really, really bright. The watercolor um, that I made by soaking a marker in just a little bit of clean water. And then I rinse my brush and then the rest is all orange. So basically three colors um, of crayons and two colors of watercolor paints. So you make your choice. The way I started my zebra was really very simple. I reserved a space. If you put your hand there, it should be an oval about the size of your hand. Of course, if you're drawing on a larger paper, then your oval will be much bigger. Do you see that? Okay. So I'm starting a sketch of my oval. Now, most people do not get the same exact perfect shape with one pencil line. That's why we call it a sketch. You make a light line until you get it just right. And then after we outline, we erase the extra little lines we don't need anymore. Now, I gave my zebra some strong shoulders. So we are going to start here and here and down. But if zebras are like people, there's all kinds of difference. Some are taller, some are shorter, some have square shoulders, some have more rounded shoulders. So don't stress if yours is not exactly like mine. I can't wait to see what you um, draw on your paper. Maybe yours is dancing a little bit. Okay, so next we are going to draw the ears. Not exactly triangles because you don't want it to look like a kitty. Okay, just a little bit of a curve there, just slightly. Okay, another line inside, another line inside here. And we are ready for facial details. What I did to my zebra is I drew a curvy line here and that's where you have the nose, the mouth, the nostrils. Okay, so this looks very much like a noble. It could be a fox, it could be turned into a wolf, it could be turned into a dog. Do you see the possibilities here? But now we are going to turn ours into a zebra. We are going to come in from this side of the ear and we are going to refine this line, bringing it a little bit in. So we're kind of taking a little bit of the cheek off. Do you see it? So she just got a little slimmer. All right, and 
in a minute, I'm going to erase these lines. All right, so now we are going to make the eye level a very light line right about here so that you don't end up with one eyeball here by the cheek and one eyeball here by the ear. We want to make them equal. Let me see if that's maybe a little bit lower. Okay, pretty good? Okay, so then now I'm going to make a curvy line here and a curvy line here. It is up to you what size you choose for the eyes. I always tell my students, the bigger the eyes, the younger the animal or the person will look because they just look like baby face. All right, so I think I'm gonna go just slightly bigger. Whatever size you go with, just make sure that you have symmetry. There's that word again, symmetry. That means equal on both sides. So that means the same size, okay? Now, here's a quick tip. If you want to measure how um, wide it is, put your pencil here, put your nail right there and then hold the nail there, and then bring it, bring it to the other eyeball, bring it to the other eyeball, and place it down. <gasps> pretty good, pretty accurate, maybe off by a little hair, but we're not gonna say anything. All right, um, if you need to pause the video, you can, or we can keep going. Okay, so um, this zebra, I like to give them two little circles, for the light reflection. So a bigger one and a smaller one. And then zebras, it's not that they're all girls. Zebras have amazing eyelashes. That's the one thing I love about them. Every time I go to the zoo, I look at their eyelashes, horses and zebras. There's something about their eyelashes. I guess they need a lot of protection. Did you know eyelashes protect our eyes from dust particles going in yeah okay so um, the reason why I made it a little bit thick like a tiny rectangle it's because I'm going to color it in and then I'm going to cut it out so I'm just gonna do two here on my original example I did three I'm going to leave that choice up to you my Ladies, if you want it to be really girly, of course, go for three. Okay, so next, we are going to give it nostrils. Nostrils so that it can breathe. I just did like a little raindrop. Okay. Whatever shape of nostrils you end up picking, um, make sure that they are identical on both sides. Okay, you could even leave just a little curve here and then another little line there. When we color this with black and leave that white, it will look sort of like a little light reflection on the nose. We're playing with possibilities. Okay, so here, the original example has like a little curve here and a little curve here. So I kind of made like the letter U. Do you see that? Or like a smile. All right, we're gonna shade that in with black in just a little bit. Now this zebra has markings down the middle. Let's make now some horses also have markings right down their forehead. Now um, I don't know if I said this on the video yet, but did you know that there is no identical zebra? So here's your challenge. You are going to make shapes and markings on your zebra, similar to mine, but you cannot copy mine. And then you can have mom or dad email me a picture of your zebra, and I want to see what you came up with. Maybe this zebra has two here and two here. 
Maybe this zebra has one here and one here. Now I was doing a lot of research because I love to learn about whatever it is I am painting, drawing, or making a sculpture of. We always explore in the classroom. Now in this case, I Googled zebra facts for kids. And I ended up on the National Geographic, that's the hair, on the National Geographic's channel for kids. Um, they said that there's three kinds of zebras. Isn't that neat? All right, now, you can leave her like that, or him, add more markings, add markings here, and you're ready to trace and color. Or you can give it a little bit of a cheekbone. I'm just gonna make a little curve here under the eye. See, it's like the letter L, do you see that? And that gives it a high cheekbone like this. Okay, so let's make the markings on the chest. Oh God, it looks like a Nike swoosh. Okay. Love zebras. All right, and now I'm ready to trace. Okay, to glue, I have told my students first, you need a surface, your gluing surface. You are going to, if you have a shape, you are going to place it upside down, open the top, the tip of your glue bottle, and let it travel down like ketchup. It may take a little longer if you don't have a whole lot. Now, some kids, they do just a few little dots of glue, and they think that's enough. Well, it will stay, but it will not be very strong friends because when you do this just a few dots not to be messy then you put this down and you have some areas kind of curling up flying in the wind so the best thing is to make a wavy line all right there we go i hadn't opened it enough you make a wavy line Close to the outline, the shape. Hold on, I'm gonna do just a little bit there on the eyelash. Um, sort of like a little wavy or zigzag line of glue close to the edge. If you want, you can do a few wavy lines in the middle. And now we are ready to stick our zebra onto the background. It's like a creating a big old sticker. Be very careful. We place it down as neatly as we can. Now, if you want to avoid getting glue on the edge of your fingers, see, another great tip is to put a clean piece of paper over the shape that you're trying to glue Press down, flatten out your paper that is being glued. Okay, it's like pressing clothes, getting all the wrinkles out, all that. So here we go. And I put some pressure in it. Some kids just do this, like little massage. If we're not massaging it, you are applying pressure. And if you had any glue ooze out, it should have been absorbed by your paper there. And voila, you have your beautiful zebra. Okay, if you would like to add any details, like maybe with your leftover paper, make a little flower, a little bow tie. Uh, is he eating something? I don't know, you tell me. Can't wait to see your work. See you later, guys.